Hey everyone, my name's Angie Ferret. I'm a motion designer and I live in Vancouver, BC, Canada. I work on a lot of superhero shows in the DC universe like uh, Batwoman and Supergirl and Superman and Lois and we create really interesting and fun FUI for playback which I'll get into today and talk to you about what that is. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to show you some of my quick tips and tricks on how to create some really cool FUI in really short times. So I just want to show you some of my own personal playback builds that I've done over the last year and a half, and then I'll kind of explain a bit about what playback is. So there we go, yeah, that's um, my work. Also, I do want to say that there are, I do work with a team of people, so a lot of the stuff that I make usually has many hands touching it. Um, but yeah, so I want to talk a bit about what playback actually is and uh, what we do. Um, <clears throat> just bring this up. So I work at a place called Scarab Digital uh, in Vancouver, and we, let me play this, and we, um, work on a bunch of different shows like Supergirl, um, The Flash, and anytime you see an actor interacting with a screen or a device like a tablet or um, you know a phone or any computer screen it can be also um, transparent screens or large LED walls, we make the graphics that go on those screens. Um, yeah and also usually they have to be made in these loopable chunks. So if uh, an actor is sitting at a screen, you know, looking at a brain, for instance, um, it has to be on kind of like an idle state until it's triggered and something will happen and it will go into another state. Um, so there's a lot of, of thought involved in, um, you know, taking each chunk and making it work and then publishing it into a format that can then be queued either by Sometimes the actor themselves, and sometimes there'll be an operator off screen that actually will click a button and, and cue that. Um, I did want to preface um, some of the stuff that I'm going to show you and, and also say that um, the way that uh, the way that network TV kind of works is we'll get a script and then you know it'll be 10 to sometimes 14 days that we get we get a script, we start concepting something, and then it has to go to set. So we're not putting this stuff in in post. This is being shot directly through camera. Uh, and the reason that is, is because obviously it's more interactive and uh, it's also much, much cheaper. So to try and track something in after the fact, it takes a lot, of, a lot more time. Um, obviously you'll have more time for development, but um, a lot of these shows have a, a finite budget that they need to hit. And we kind of help them do that. So we help them save money um, and also still get some cool looking stuff as well. Uh, and the reason I'm saying all of this is because sometimes on s some builds we'll have as little as a day, sometimes half a day, to turn out something that looks kind of cool. So basically today I want to show you how to make some really cool stuff in a really short amount of time um, with some like quick and dirty tricks basically. Um, yeah, so that's basically what playback is, how playback works, and the reason why I'm showing you some quick and easy trick tricks today. So let's just get into it. Um, the first thing I want to show you is a piece from Supergirl. Um, so in this episode they have captured a phantom. I'll show you the final product. So there's a phantom in this containment unit. Uh, in this particular example it's on um, a tablet and the actor is kind of interacting with it, uh, showing that there's 
a disturbance in the containment unit, the uh, Phantom is going a bit nuts down there trying to get out. Um, so for this one, um, I'm going to show you a bit of really quick character, in quotes, animation. And um, not going to go too much into the styling of the containment unit, but I'll show you a quick way to do that. And um, the focus is mainly going to be bringing in your 3D assets and your cameras into After Effects so that you can add any like 2D or 2.5D elements that are that kind of um, interact with the camera as well. So, you know, these little um, like alerts, for instance, on the side of the containment unit when he like swipes down, that's just put in super quick and easy uh, in After Effects. So I'll show you how to do that. All right, so to start, I have this containment unit that has been sent over from um, production. So, uh, you know, props or set deck or um, somebody over in the production side has created this and sent it over, obviously with only a couple days to create something like this. Um, you know, we, we don't have time to do that. So it's really great that, that production can and send these elements over to us. Um, so this is actually in a whole bunch of different pieces. I'm sure there's, I don't know, uh, 6,000 pieces, something like that. Um, so for this, obviously I didn't go through and texture each piece or anything. All I did was just put a, a cell renderer on this. And then in After Effects, uh, went in and added some... Um, went in and added some effects to it so that it made it look a bit more interesting. Um, yeah, so we'll, I'll show you that after. Um, but yeah, just to kind of talk about the setup here, I have a target camera, and if you're not familiar with target cameras, uh, basically it's just a normal camera with a target tag on it. Um, and to get that, you can just add a normal target uh, camera, and usually it'll come in with a null, and you can just delete that, and then um, if you click on your, your target tag, you can just drag whatever element you want to always be in focus into this target object field. So in this case, I just dragged that cell uh, containment into, um, into the target, and uh, no matter where our camera is looking, it's going to always be um, in the center of the fa frame, uh, essentially. Um, yeah, so uh, to look at this, I have the camera, and I just have basically set up kind of like a looping animation. So I have, you know, the first keyframe and then comes out to here and then basically pasted the end keyframe so that this is going to be uh, a seamless loop. As I mentioned before, um, we usually have to have some type of idle state or some type of looping state on our playback builds. And this is just an easy way to do that for the first state. Uh, so let's talk about the character animation. For that, what I did was just use Mixamo, and I'll show you how to look at the motion, motion system in Cinema 4D that you can easily uh, blend different animations together. Uh, so again, obviously, it, with limited time, um, something like Mixamo is going to be a really great uh, resource because there's all of these animations that are in here um, that are already made that we can utilize. There's characters that are in here that are already utilized. And for my purposes, as we saw in the example that I showed you, um, you can't really see the Phantom. So I've done some post work on that in After Effects and kind of blurred it and just added some effects on top of it. Uh, so this is going to be perfect because I don't actually need to take a character and rig it. Um, though, if you need to do that, Mixamo also gives you that option. So you can upload your own character. Um, and uh, it has to be kind of like a, a human-esque, a humanoid character in order for it to work. But in my case, I'm just going to use uh, this guy here, uh, the Warwick, and a couple of different um, pre-made animations. So in my case, um, in characters, I already have this dude chosen, so I'll use him. And then for animations, you can actually search. So for me, um, what I want is kind of like an idle state where he's just standing there and then one where he's kind of like going a bit crazy. So I'll, I'll do something called swipe where he kind of like idles, runs up towards the front of the containment unit, swipes at it, and then goes back to idle again. Uh, so you can just in the search field here on the animation tab, uh, I'm going to type in idle. And there should be a, a 
couple different types of idle in here. Um, the one that I chose, I believe is called Orc Idle. It's kind of like a monster, weird breathing type of situation. Uh, here it is. So if I select it, I can see what's happening uh, in the little preview here. You can spin it, uh, speed it up if you want. You can um, trim it. Uh, but in my case, I'm just going to leave it as is. And then to download, I'm just going to hit download. And you'll want to make sure that you have the uh, FBX is what's going to come in. Um, it's going to come in seamlessly. So I'm just going to leave that as default. Make sure you have with skin. Um, if you want the character to come in, if you don't, if you want the character and the rig to come in, choose with skin. If you want just the rig um, and you're a bit more advanced and you can attach that yourself, you can just choose uh, without skin and you can choose the frame rate as well. So I'm going to actually leave this all as is. Click download. It will prepare for you and then it will download. So I already actually have it um, in my folder structure. So I'm just going to exit that. And then the second one I want is swipe. So I'm just going to search for swipe here. And I think it, the one I chose was mutant swiping because again, it's kind of this more like orc-esque um, monstrous type of swipe. Uh, so again, if I choose it, I can see what's happening in the preview with this, with the character that I have selected. Um, and yeah, same, same process. So if I click um, download, just going to leave all of the default settings. I'm just going to close Mixamo and bring those in. So I have them saved already in my assets folder here. So I have a Mixamo folder. I have the mutant swiping and then the information that comes with that. So the, you know, the skin that comes along with it. You don't need to worry about because it all just gets applied for us. Uh, so we have the orc idle and the mutant swiping here. So to bring them in, I'm actually going to merge it into my current project. So I'll come up here to file merge project and go back to the correct folder. I'll choose the um, idle first, uh, just to think about it a bit. I want them to be idling, then to swipe and then go back to idling again. So I'll open this. And here I'm going to leave it all as default as well, but a couple things to make sure we have clicked on. Um, I want to make sure that the materials are selected, leave that as standard. Tracks we want, that's going to bring in the actual animation. Um, and yeah, I want to make sure we have, um, if there's any lights or anything associated. In this case, I don't think there are, but I'll just leave it checked on anyhow. Click OK. Uh, when it asks if you want to reassign included, included takes, I'm going to click No. Sometimes I notice if I do that, it just kind of moves the character off center. Uh, and I'm just going to turn my containment unit off for a second, make sure it came in. And yeah, if we look at the bottom here with my rig selected, actually I'll exit the camera. Um, with the rig selected, we can see that he is in fact idling. Looks like he's you know kind of breathing heavy. Awesome. Um, so yeah, we have the number of frames that were that came through on Mixamo. So it would have told us that it was 220 frames long. Awesome, all looks good. And the textures are applied. We can see our, uh, our rig there. Looks great. Um, underneath our Warwick, so this is the actual skin. You can see it has a, the skin tags and everything are applied. And then under our rig, if we wanted to, we could go in and, and see exactly how that is set up. But for our purposes, it works. I'm just going to leave it as is. So I'm going to show you how to access um, the whole motion system in here. Um, so in order to, to access that, we need to actually add a motion system tag. So I'm going to click on my, my parent, the very top of my, um, of my rig, which in this case is hips. And then I'm going to come up here to animate. And I'm going to add a motion clip. So make sure you have it selected, animate, motion clip, click on that. And in here, in order to add it, we want to make sure that we have, uh, by default, this is what will come up. So um, our 221 frames, perfect. Uh, we can name this. So I'm just going to name this something that makes sense. So I'm going to title this idle. Uh, we're going to want to create a motion clip. 
Um, we're going to want to remove included animation from original object. Yeah, we'll leave that. We want position, rotation, and parameters. That looks good. I don't want to change the scale or go into point level animation, so I'm going to leave those unchecked. Click OK. It'll look like nothing happened other than that it's added this um, motion system tag here. Uh, in order to see what's going on, I'm going to open up my, um, my animation timeline. So I'm going to come up here to Window, and I'm going to go into my Dope Sheet. So Timeline and Dope Sheet, and open that up. And right now, it just looks like all of the keyframes that we had already seen. In order to see the motion system, so we're going to click on the Motion Mode button, and now we can see what we have added here. So it's named correctly. Um, it's given us this other, it's showing us this other uh, timeline here um, that's showing us um, you know, our 221 frame animation. Uh, and to navigate around in here, you can just use the same uh, buttons as you do in the uh, you know, your perspective view, viewport. Um, so with these clips, uh, it shows you the length, so you know if you're familiar with After Effects, you know if you're stretching or um, shrinking your uh, your clips down on your timeline, uh, stretching or squishing the, the time on this. So that's kind of cool, and it does affect the animation, so it will speed up or slow down. Um, so next thing we want to do is actually create a motion clip out of this. So from within our our dupe, our dope sheet here, I'm going to right click on this idle, and I'm going to come down to Save Motion Source As. Uh, and doing this will also save it externally, so you can use these motion clips in other projects. So if you do a lot of character animation and you need to do it quickly, you can take whichever animations you want from Mixamo and kind of create a nice library for yourself. Um, as long as you kind of name them and remember what they are. So I'm going to go save motion source as, and I'm going to go into my folder structure here and save these in my motion source folder. So it saves it as this format, C4D SRC, and I'm going to call this idle, and save it. And so this will allow us to um, move these motion clips onto the timeline and blend them. So I'm going to add a second one in here. Um, and in doing that, I have to actually add a second uh, rig and skin character in here. So I'm going to hit uh, Option or Alt uh, G to group this, and just turn this guy off for a bit. So we're going to bring a second one in, but we're going to delete it after because we don't need the skin for both. Um, so again, I'm going to go File Merge Project, and this time I'll choose the Mutant Swiping, same process, click Open, leave this as default again. Click on no, and yeah, so we can see it's cr it's brought in the same uh, setup, so the same character and the same rig, and it's also brought in the textures again. Um, but if I scroll my timeline now, we should see a different animation. So this guy's swiping, perfect. So again, same process. Going to click on the top parent of this rig and go to animate, add motion clip name it, so swipe, something logical, uh, leave this as default, click OK, and then we have our swipe in our dope sheet as well, and we also have that on the timeline here. So I'm going to do the same thing, right click, save motion source as, call this swipe, save it, and I'm just going to open up this timeline a bit, so we have some more room. Um, actually, I'm going to change my timeline to be a bit longer as well, maybe just like 500 so I can see what's happening. All right, so we can see that we have on our timeline the swipe motion source and the idle motion source. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this uh, second one from the timeline here, and I'm going to drag the idle onto this top timeline. So you have to wait till you get this little arrow with the plus symbol that allows you to drop it. 
Uh, and then you can kind of move your clips around wherever you want them after that. So in this case, I want to have the idle first and to start at frame zero. And then I want the swipe to come in and I want those to kind of blend together. So you can see as I start to um, overlap the clips that we get this blue little curve here that shows us um, how they're blending together. So if I uh, press play on there, we should see it kind of seamlessly goes from the idle state into that swiping state. And if I don't have that, I don't think this one's too bad actually because it's kind of uh, goes from a standing state to another standing state. Well, there's a little bit of a pop. But yeah, if you have them overlapping, um, that'll just be nice and smooth and you can kind of dictate how, how long that transition is. Um, yeah, it's super nice because it just super smooth and if you're going from something more like uh, maybe your character's going from idle to jumping it's just gonna make it nice and smooth. Um, so again I want this to loop so I'm gonna actually go idle swipe and then I'm gonna add another idle to my timeline so again I'll just drag that on and then have that kind of overlap the end as well so we should have a nice loop make this 465 frames long. So you can kind of check that out. Press play. Idle to idle and then swipe. Awesome. So if I go back into my camera, awesome. So the next step, this character guy, I'm going to call that done. So for this project, basically what I rendered was two things. Um, I rendered out the character by itself and I rendered out the uh, containment unit by itself. Uh, we do have the option, so if I go into my render settings here. Uh, when you save this out, so for the, for the containment unit, I use the cell render. Um, it doesn't matter which, um, which part of that that I do this next step on, but as long as you do it on once, you can do it on both, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so if we come into my output tab, I just want to make sure that everything is good here. Uh, I'm going to choose all frames and make sure it's in the proper frame rate, all of that. Uh, the important thing is in, in the save. So at the top here, I'd recommend um, saving this part first. So in this case, if I'm you know doing the containment unit, uh, just make sure you save that wherever you want that. Great, save it properly. As you can see, I've already pre-rendered this. Um, but once you do this, at the bottom here, we wanna make sure, this by default I believe is twirled up. But if we twirl this compositing project file down, um, we can click save. In my case, I wanna save for After Effects. You have some other options here as well. Um, and I'm just going to check on all of these. So relative, include timeline markers if I had any, and include the 3D data. Perfect. Uh, if you go save project file, this is going to direct you to where that's saving it. So in my case, I'm going to put it beside my containment unit. And you can also save this. So this is saving as the project file name, but uh, maybe you want to name it containment unit. So it matches your render. And this will save right beside your, uh, your rendered files. Uh, so for this, I saved it as a PNG um, with alpha channel, all of that good stuff. Um, and then I would go ahead and hit render. I won't make you wait through that. Uh, and then the creature I also rendered by itself, but not with the cell render. So I turned that off. Uh, so I'm going to pop into After Effects and show you how to use that file and what it looks like. Um, so I'll go into my renders, which are here, containment unit. Um, and if I just choose this file and drag that in, or however you get your files into After Effects, um, it'll bring in this folder that has your PNG and also this um, composition that it's already made. So if I click on this composition, I'll show you what's happening. Um, I have my cell render of this containment unit. Wonderful. And then I have a, a 3D camera in here. So it's brought in that animation, that simple animation that we put on it. Um, so if we add other objects to this, it's going to bring it in pretty seamlessly. 
Uh, so the last thing I want to do, I just want to bring in that uh, creature animation. So I could bring in the other AAC, it's saved with both of these. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to bring in the creature. So I'm, I'm going to double click here to bring in the um, PNG sequence. And I'm just going to drag that into my timeline. Awesome. So right now it looks kind of weird. Um, the creature was standing a bit further back in the containment unit, so we can run up and swipe at it. Um, so yeah, for this, uh, I'll put the containment unit on top, and I'm just going to add a couple of effects to this real quick. Um, so in this one, I think I'm going to just do a quick color key to take away that black. I always type color the Canadian way. Uh, color key. Quickly choose the black. Again, this is super quick and dirty. Awesome, we can see the, the little guy in there. Sweet. Um, and then on the containment unit, I'm going to maybe add some glow. I love me some edge glow. And then uh, just one more thing quickly. I'm going to right click. I'm not sure if people add color this way, but I usually go layer styles. Um, color overlay. I just find it renders nice and fast. Um, yeah, make sure we have this little button clicked on. And I'll change this to bluish. Nice. Um, yeah, so obviously we can spend more time making this look good, adding some more effects. Uh, the important thing I want to show you is um, how to add those, uh, you know, 2.5D objects that are going to interact with the camera that we brought in. Uh, so I'm going to select my type tool and just type some type in here. So danger and make that 3D just by clicking on this little 3D button here. And then I want to just bring that into frame, put that kind of in front of our containment unit. So now if we kind of scrub around, we can see that that is in fact interacting. So yeah, might just take a bit of positioning in there, wherever you want it. But yeah, just a quick, easy way to add elements into our scene that interact. Um, I'll just show you the example one more time. So in this case, I added those little circles with the exclamation mark, and I added kind of a grid on top with some feathering. Um, really simple trick. Really easy to do with the camera. Uh, I'll just bring in the background real quick in here. make a comp out of this. And then we can drag our containment unit over top. Beautiful. There we go. So we have that set into our, in our UI. Yeah, again, I probably spent a little more than, you know, 10 minutes doing this. Um, but you can see just, you know, how, how quickly uh, you can achieve, um, you can achieve this just by some simple tricks. Uh, so that's it for this one. The next thing I want to show you, I'm going to make this a new project. Next thing I want to show you is uh, a piece from Batwoman. Uh, in this season, we have had the Batmobile, which is really fun to work with. Um, I'll just show you what we're going to do. Um, samples, there we go. So we have uh, this night shot of Gotham City, which is Vancouver, and we have the Batmobile, um, and we've just done a really quick, again, just cell, uh, cell shading on, on the Batmobile with some color in After Effects and some effects added. Uh, and then we have this HUD element uh, that I've created, and it just makes the Batmobile look like it is part of this world. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do a quick track. It kind of looks like, you know, the searching for the car. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. Again, Cinema makes it so quick and easy to do. It's just it's a dream to use. So I'll open up 
a new project in cinema and show you how to get started. I'm going to close my uh, dope sheet on this. So first thing we want to do is actually create a motion tracker. So to do that, you just go to the top tracker and create motion tracker. And then from here, we want to add our footage. Uh, so just a note about our footage. I took that night shot uh, that was sent over again from production and I just made a JPEG sequence out of it. Um, it's really fast to load into cinema if you make uh, a JPEG sequence out of it. Um, so I'm just going to load that into my footage section. So with my motion tracker selected, I'm going to go to footage, click on this little button here, and then navigate over to my sequence. So I have this street night sequence. Um, the frames are kind of weird because it was taken from a big chunk um, from production. Select the first frame, click OK, similar to bringing it into After Effects. If I scrub around, we can see you know, we just have a camera with that that move on it. So next thing we do from here is I'm going to click on the motion tracker and um, what I like to do is I like to turn the resampling rate all the way up. Um, it makes the footage appear as it should. Um, obviously by default it sets it lower in case you have a machine that's a bit slower. Um, you can kind of see more of a preview of it. I noticed that setting the resampling rate up to 100 um, also creates a more accurate track as well. So it'll take the detail that's being seen and just get better tracks from it. So something we can do here from our footage tab as well um, is we can actually create a background object. So with this background object, um, if we click off of our motion tracker or if we want to actually render the scene out with something in the scene with the background being seen, this will allow uh, allow you to see the background as well. So that actually has the um, the same JPEG sequence applied to it. So that's an option as well. Um, so the next thing we want to do is actually track this footage. So in order to do that, I am going to click on over to my 2D tracking tab. And uh, there are some options that are going to help you create a bit more of an accurate, uh, accurate um, track as well. So this first option here, we have number of tracks. So by default, it's fairly low. It's set to about 300. Um, so if you want more tracks, which I, I would suggest is putting that up, if you have the, you know, the, the powerful computer to do that, um, maybe add like 800 or 1,000 or 1,200. Um, I'll do 800 in this case. And then minimum spacing, you can also change um, if you want that a bit higher. Uh, maybe I'll make, actually lowering it will make them closer together. So maybe I'll make that like 10. Um, and then I'm going to leave everything else as default. Uh, except usually what I do is I won't track right from the beginning um, or the end. Usually I'll track from like the middle or mid end. Um, this piece of footage, we're not really, nothing that we want to track to is going out of frame. Um, but if you track from the end or track backwards, you're going to make sure that everything you want to track for the entire sequence is in frame, or at least that it has the information from the end um, to keep whatever you're tracking in in frame. Um, so I'll start around here and I'll either track backwards and then track again from the front, or you can also just click auto track. Um, so I've already done a track on this. I don't want to make you sit here and, and wait for the track to happen. It can take a few minutes depending on your computer. Um, so I have this 2D track already done. Um, so all of these pink like diamond shapes are our tracks. Um, so this is great. We can see that there's a lot of detail here uh, on the ground um, from the buildings in the back. Um, and all these little like tails, those show you uh, the way in which your track trackers are moving. Um, so this looks like a pretty solid track. Um, if for some reason it doesn't, you can always, you know, try a different frame. So maybe go a little further or a little uh, closer up to the beginning and try the track again. One other thing I wanted to mention if you don't get a super solid track is um, you can also click over on this options tab. Uh, and by default, the de default pattern size is set fairly low. Um, and the default search size is also set fairly low. Um, so what I would suggest is just turning this up, you know, maybe to like 25. 
Um, and this one I can go up to like 100. Again, it depends on your computer, but um, I find if I turn this up a bit more that the actual tracker will be searching a larger amount of pixels in, in your footage um, and get a more accurate track. Uh, so those are some things to try. But on this one we got a pretty, a pretty good track, so I'm going to leave this as is. And the next step is to go over to your 3D solver. Uh, so from here, um, all I really need to do is click on Run 3D Solver if I'm, if I'm happy with the trackers that are in here. And again, I won't make you wait, I have another uh, a file set up for that already. Uh, so this is what it will look like. Um, so we should have a solved camera in our scene already, so I'm just going to exit this so we can see uh, what that looks like. So we have our camera, we have our tracking data. Um, usually if it's a really good track, these little points will show up as green. Um, in this one, you know, it still works for our purposes, but if you're getting, if you want something that is like really photorealistic, um, you might, that might just mean adjusting your footage. Um, so yeah, something else you can do in the motion tracker as well is, um, in the 2D track, in your footage panel is, uh, is actually turn up the brightness and stuff as well. So fiddling with that might actually give you a better track too. Um, but for our purposes, this is fairly graphic. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate. Um, again, quick and dirty. Uh, so this is, this is going to work for me. Um, yeah, so from this view, we can see the, the dots that are further away. That is actual things it's tracking that are in the distance. Uh, the ones that are closer up, obviously those are closer. Uh, so I'm just going to bring in the Batmobile from another project here. I'm just going to copy it in. Copy. and paste that into this scene. I'm going to go outside of my camera again because the car is huge and really close to the camera, so this just takes a bit of adjusting as well. Um, and in this case, the camera is staying fairly stationary, so if it was like dollying forward um, or panning around or something, we might see those tracks go off of a straight line. Uh, but for this one, it is fairly straight. Um, I don't need to adjust the car too much other than where it is uh, where it is in 3D space. So I'm just going to bring it down so it's kind of at street level. And then scrub through and it looks like it's sticking to the road which is what we want. Awesome. So again, last thing I'm going to do for this is go into my render settings and add a cell render. So to find the cell render, that's under effect um, and cell render, alphabetical. And usually what I'll do is I'll make the background color black and the foreground color uh, white. So that way, as we saw with the creature uh, containment unit in the Supergirl example I showed, you can just remove the background easily or add a blending mode and uh, takes care of half of takes care of half the work just by doing this. Um, also, I think I'm going to add the edges, and let's just take a quick look at what that looks like. Oops. So I'm going to add an interactive render region here, just to see what our car looks like. Uh, and luckily, on this particular model, which again was provided to us from production. Um, the mesh is really dense in areas and not dense in other areas, and in, in this case it works to my advantage because it kind of gives the car a nice uh, stylized look. Um, so again, then we would just render that out. Um, if we wanted to as well, for this example, we could also save out um, a compositing project for this if we wanted to add other elements into the scene. Uh, that's wonderful, but the example I showed you didn't have that, it just had the car, so I'm just going to just render out the car as it is. So I'm actually going to open up a pre-existing project that I have that has all of the HUD elements and um, the background footage and everything in there already, and we're just going to add in our car. Alright, so yeah, you can see we have um, our HUD elements here, we have some grids that are laid on, um, we have the footage uh, in the background already, 
Um, so yeah, we're just going to bring in our render. And then I'm going to duplicate the street uh, footage that's behind here just so we can make sure that it's, uh, I think there's some resizing and stuff done on here. Um, and just replace that. So I'm going to drag and hold Alt to replace. And we should see our car come in. And it should still be... tracked in, interacting with our footage. And yeah, computer is struggling a little, but uh, yeah, it is working. Awesome. Um, so the only really thing that I really did on this, um, in this example was I added a couple of layers uh, that are different colors and I just added some glow, made the Batmobile flash a little bit. Um, so quickly again, I'll use edge glow again, my favorite. And change the color on this as well, maybe a little brighter yellow, something like that. Uh, I also have a bunch of um, effects on here that were already on the street, so maybe I'll take away those Venetian blinds. And the color actually looks cool, I'll leave that one on, kind of dims it a little bit. And then for this one, we'll take the glow off. And maybe I'll change the levels a bit. Make it a bit darker. Maybe change the blending mode. Add an overlay. And then, yeah, I basically just did a, a bit of a loop. Um, so in the transparency, 100, go ahead a couple frames, 10, a couple more frames, 100, and then the good old loop out. So just uh, press Alt on the stopwatch and then type, start typing loop out. And then this will continue to loop from that point forward. So we should get kind of a flashing effect. Um, yeah, I'll show you that in here again, our final product. Tracked in, awesome, and yeah, then we would package this up, send it off to set, they would put it on all of the screens that they need, and I could move on to the next project. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much for listening. Um, again, my name is Angie Ferret, I'll just show you my information if you're interested in finding me. Um, my social handle is Angie Ferret, um, you can check out my website at angieferret.com. Also feel free to check out Scarab's website, so that's scarabdigital.com. And then the place I teach at is called Vancouver Film School. Um, you can check them out as well. There's a lot of interesting work that the students have done there. Um, yeah, thanks again for checking me out and uh, I hope we can connect on social. I hope I can see you um, in the future at a social event. Uh, come up and say hi, I'd love to chat MoGraph with you. Thank you so much.